Welcome back to Illinois with Ohio State head coach Luke Fickle and coach after the Nebraska loss you said we will all grow from this as long as we handle it the right way. How has your team reacted to the loss to help you in preparation for today. Well they showed their courage they came out on Sunday Sunday night got rid of the feeling and ran around a little bit and then really got an enthusiastic Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday practice. I think that's what shows coach your quarterback Braxton Miller left that Nebraska game with an ankle injury. What did you just see during warm ups that's going to help how you use him today. Uh, he, he's going to build off the confidence he had in the Nebraska game. I think he feels good. You know, he's just got to get out there and run around and play like he did last week. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank good you. luck today. All right, Heather, thanks very much. Now, Coach Davey, Heather told us in advance of today's game, she expected it to be a bad hair day. <laughs> I thought she held together pretty well there, but Braxton Miller, you saw a shot a moment ago. Ron Zook's team, they'll both have to deal with the win this afternoon. Yeah, and Ohio State going into the win right off the bat. But, you know, the injury to, back to Braxton Miller, again, the ankle. One thing, Bob, and you know this with young players, they affect young players a lot more than they affect older players. That ankle injury is significant today to see how he responds because he is, without a doubt, even though he's a freshman, the leader of this Ohio State team. Taking it about the six yard line by Jordan Hall. And he's out close to the 30, tripped up at the 29 yard line. So Braxton Miller, only the third freshman to start a quarterback for Ohio State. And he had his team in position to win until leaving with an ankle injury midway through the third at Nebraska. Improving as a passer, but his strength is the rushing game, running game, 10 carries for 90 yards against Nebraska. And you can see lined up right behind Braxton Miller is Dan Heron. Boom Heron, who last year was first team all Big Ten at running back with 16 touchdowns, but suspended up until now. Back in the lineup for the first time this season. And Miller on a keeper picks up five. Akeem Spence made the stop. But Dan Heron again out for the first six weeks because of NCAA suspensions. We asked earlier this week the coaching staff for Ohio State, specifically the offensive coordinator Jim Bowman, now how are you going to work Dan Heron back into the lineup? He said, how am I going to work him back in? We'll get him involved by getting him in in the first play. <laughs> He's going to start the football game. And here's the first carry for Heron. And he has a first down. Of course, Dan Heron was part of a group of players suspended to start the season at Ohio State five different players of course suspended for the very well-known memorabilia for tattoo parlor favors investigation during the offseason then back on September 2nd three additional players Jordan Hall Corey Brown Travis Howard suspended for accepting two hundred dollars at a charity event prior to the Nebraska game three more suspensions for players being overpaid by a booster for part-time work Karen among that group and he's got another carry out to about the 48 yard line a gain of eight and the biggest loss for Ohio State coach out of all of that is Devere Posey a terrific wide receiver that has been suspended for five additional games he's only going to be eligible to play their last couple of games of the regular season well I think the big thing if you're Ohio State you know they had the big letdown last week after Braxton Miller was injured at Nebraska they can't worry who the quarterback is how Braxton ankles ankle is or who suspended who isn't they just have to focus on doing their job as a team Miller finds a lane he's got a first down on a cutback to the 45 yard line as we take a look at today's Ohio State impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A well you could tell talking to Jim Bowman or the offensive coordinator of Ohio State Dan Heron was going to give them a spark you know he's hungry he hasn't played you know he has fresh legs Jordan Hall I love him as a return man with Heron back he's also going to play some wide receiver and on defense for Illinois Whitney merciless leads the country in sacks but it's a different kind of game today you can see early what Ohio State's plan is they're going to line up and run right at Illinois. Aaron again, plenty of yardage to the perimeter. To the 36-yard line, a gain of nine more on first down for Ohio State. And it's such a different game for the Illinois defense. You look at their schedule, they have played mostly all spread type offenses. East, West, a lot of passing game teams. This is their first real test against a big, powerful north-south running team. And this is an impressive drive right here. Vic Kennig knew yesterday 
This was a change of pace for his defense. Different style offense. Now it's Jordan Hall. And it's tailback. He takes the handoff on second and one. He's got a first down close to the 30 yard line of Illinois before he's brought down after a gain of five as we take a look at the focus points this afternoon from Coach Davey. Well the first one's obvious and we've seen it already. They have to run to win. No secret they have young wide receivers. They have a freshman quarterback. They're going into the wind right now. They have to run the ball. Second thing eliminate negative plays. Illinois a big penetration team and don't let A.J. Jenkins beat you when you're on defense if you're Ohio State. Make somebody else catch the football. All runs on this opening drive for Ohio State. A cutback by Jordan Hall. To about the 28-yard line, a gain of three. Shupo Sani made the stop for Illinois. Sets up second down at seven. An impressive opening drive for Illinois, beginning just inside their own 30-yard line, or Ohio State, pardon me, just inside their own 30-yard line. And it has been all runs down inside the Illinois 30 yard line and now Heron's back in that tailback in the pistol. Some kind of a two back pistol which is a little bit different. Illinois does some of the same set with a fullback in the game. Miller bottled up. Lost a couple of yards. For the first time on this opening drive a long third down for Ohio State's offense. Michael Buchanan and Trulon Henry combined on the stop on Braxton Miller. And you mentioned Buchanan, the defensive end. He and Whitney Mercillus, probably two of the best pass rushing defensive end combinations in the Big Ten. But they're going to have to rush the passer a little differently here on this third and long because you have to be controlled and keep Braxton Miller in the pocket. So you just can't turn it loose and rush up the field like you normally can. First third down on this opening drive for the Buckeyes, third and nine. Miller quarterback draw can't get the first down brought down at least five yards shy Houston Bates red shirt freshman inside linebacker was there to make the stop and with the wind being as strong as it is already an early decision for Luke Fickle this is probably about a 42 or 43 yard field goal attempt unless you go for it on fourth down at about five and it looks like they are going to send the field goal unit out. The sophomore Drew Basil who has been terrific he's made his last seven in a row but this one with the wind of factor from 43. <laughs> Basil with the wind in his face. Plays the wind and it looks like he snuck it inside the left <laughs> upright. <laughs> So Ohio State gets on the board first. Their run game and a little help from the gentle breeze here in Champaign gives them the lead. What a terrific scene here in Champaign. I've been in stadiums with a white out, a black out, a green out, a blue out, never a stripe out. But the fans have striped out the stadium here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign as they are fired up about their Illini. But a terrific opening drive by Ohio State that stalled inside the 30 resulting in a 43 yard field goal to get the Buckeyes on the board. Wind affects the kicking game more than any other phase. Even strategy right here with this kickoff by Ohio State when you're kicking into the wind. You see right there they just went with the squib to keep it out of the air. And Pollard has to fall on it at the 25 yard line. Troy Pollard tried to pick up the charity hop on the run and couldn't hold on to it. So it's still pretty good field position at the 25 yard line for Nathan Shieldhouse the sophomore who has put together some terrific numbers so far this season with the help of A.J. Jenkins at wide receiver. Drastically improved in the passing game since last year. Much quicker release, much more accuracy down the field. One of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the entire country. And he'll keep it on first down and run into a wall of Buckeyes, a gain of about four. Now to the 29 yard line brings up second down and six. I think you're going to see how similar these two offenses are schematically. You see Illinois going a little faster tempo right here. Probably to take advantage Bob of being with the wind. 
You know, you want to get as many snaps as you can when you have the wind at your back. Shieldhouse, first pass attempt up the sideline to Pollard. And he might have stepped out right about at the line of scrimmage. Minimal gain, maybe a yard. It'll be third down and a long five, still close to six. And if you're Ohio State, make somebody other than number eight, A.J. Jenkins, beat you. It's, it's that simple. One of the best passing combinations in all of college ball. Shield House to number eight, A.J. Jenkins. You see him lined up as an inside receiver right here. Right here in the slot. Ohio State in bump and run man-to-man -man coverage. Shield House swings it wide. A floating pass that's broken up. Intended for Spencer Harris. Tyler Moeller, the nickel back for Ohio State with a great job to knock down the floater, and Ohio State forces Illinois three downs and out. Yeah, it's interesting on that first passing situation. Ohio State up, bump and run, man free coverage, really challenging these receivers. Bob also punting, punting with the win now. You have to be careful not to out punch your coverage. Jordan Hall, a dangerous return man for Ohio State. And a true freshman punter, Justin Duvernois, just barely gets it away. Some contact, and it comes up against the sideline where it's bumped out of bounds by Jordan Hall. And Duvernois limping a bit back to the sideline. Plenty of contact after a 41-yard punt, but so three downs and out for Illinois offensively. Ohio State with a 3-0 lead, and they have the football back when we return. The galloping ghosts immortalized outside Memorial Stadium here, and no one will ever again wear the number 77 for the Fighting Illini. Red Grange, a Hall of Famer. In the College Football and Pro Football Hall of Fame was a halfback at Illinois from 1923 through 1925 and back to the offense for Ohio State. Jordan Hall moves the pile for about three maybe four yards as we check in with Heather Cox. Well, Bob Braxton Miller practiced all week, took the same amount of first team reps as he normally does. The only concession to that sprained ankle is a much heavier tape job and a three quarter high top instead of his customary low top. Now something to keep our eyes on. Sources at practice this week did tell me Miller was definitely struggling with his drop step footwork. Couldn't put weight on that back foot when passing. Also, Ohio State traveled all four quarterbacks for the first time just to be on the safe side guys. Well, Heather that is pessimism if you're traveling four quarterbacks and you think you might get that deep on the roster but we expect we might see Kenny Guyton who's listed as the third stringer as Jordan Hall is shut down after a gain of maybe a yard it'll be third down and six you wonder if Guyton has moved ahead of Joe Bozerman as the second string quarterback well you go back to that we showed that graphic last week when Braxton Miller got hurt with five minutes left in the third quarter Nebraska 267 yards after that to Ohio State's 29. So the entire confidence of the Ohio State football team, they lost it when Braxton Miller went out of the game. So he is the key, key player in this game. Third down and a long five, close to six. Four-man rush. Miller under pressure. Lost the football. A scramble for it. It's still loose. And it looks like Ohio State saved themselves a possession. Whitney Merciless, number one in the country with nine and a half sacks now. Got to Miller and got the strip sack. Yeah, you're going to see Merciless on an inside move on the big offensive tackle, Adams, right there. Beat him inside. That's a matchup we're going to watch all day. A big 330-pound offensive tackle in Adams against a speed rusher, Merciless. What a breakout year it's been for Whitney Merciless. He had one sack as a freshman, one sack as a sophomore. Now in his junior season, nine and a half sacks. And that's also the fifth time this year he's forced a fumble. And it forces a wobbly punt from Ben Buchanan. It'll take a bounce and a good one for Ohio State. Why even go near it if you're Ryan Lankford? Some deep breaths. You can hear a little bit of a, a gasp from the crowd here at Illinois. 53-yard punt. After Illinois held on defense, Jason Ford 
Rumbles out across the 25 to about the 27 yard line, a gain of eight yards on first down for Ford as we take a look at today's Illinois Impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. I think A.J. Jenkins, right now, the hottest wide receiver in the country. He has four plays over 50 yards. He is Illinois' passing game. I think Derek Dempke, I think this is going to be a low scoring field goal kind of game. Andrew Sweat, the only senior on defense for Ohio State. And off to four. Takes a hit. Boy, he moved the pile. I think he got a first down. Tyler Moeller tried to bring him down, but it's a first down for Illinois. Much. Number 16, Illinois, trailing 3-0 on what might be the last play of the first quarter. Pollard in space. Makes a man miss. Got the 10 loss to the penalty, plus a couple of more. Solomon Thomas had a chance to bring him down at the line of scrimmage. It couldn't do it. So Troy Pollard, who's averaging close to 10 yards per carry, picked up 11 there. End of the first quarter, Ohio State on top by a field goal. There hasn't been a ton to cheer about so far this year for the Buckeyes. As they are 3-3, three and 0-2 three, oh and in the Big Ten, and they're in a heck of an atmosphere today here in Champaign. They have striped the stadium as we begin the second quarter, second down and long for the Illini. Pollard. Out to the 41 yard line. It'll be third down and five. Well, it's only three nothing. But Bob Davy, we were talking a moment ago off the air. You think that this is misleadingly wonderful as a start for Ohio State? I think a great start for Ohio State because as a coach, you always worry when your team gets to the breaking point, particularly mentally. And you sense that Ohio State, because they've been through so much, and then last week that big meltdown against Nebraska, they were just about at the breaking point in my opinion so I think for them to start fast survive that first quarter was critical just from a mental standpoint Sheil house on third and six lobs one down the sideline for Jenkins he makes a terrific catch but he stepped out of bounds a great catch by AJ Jenkins but he may have stepped out of bounds while the ball was in the air The official on the near side took off his hat. Normally, that's to signal that the receiver stepped out. Let's see if Illinois gets another playoff before the replay booth might buzz down to the sideline. Well, that's good coaching by Paul Petrino to get them up there at the line of scrimmage. Well, no review. As Shieldhouse is back to throw again. Again to the sideline, and this time Jenkins is about three yards out of bounds. Well, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the numbers from the first quarter. And it has been a run-heavy game for both teams so far, particularly the Buckeyes. Yeah, and if it's Ohio State, it's going to be that. You know, a freshman quarterback, all young receivers. I think most impressive, this time of possession right here, particularly Ohio State going into the wind, so they controlled the clock in that first quarter. Shieldhouse with the option toss. Donovan Young lockers out in front to the 32-yard line of Ohio State. About four yards shy of a first down. C.J. Barnett was there to make the stop, but it will be third down and four. These offenses are so similar. First, you see running back by committee by both offenses. Both have running option-style quarterbacks. Formation-wise, they're about the same. The only difference... Illinois much more advanced in the passing game because of Nathan Shieldhouse, A.J. Jenkins. Eighth play of the drive for the Illini. It's not a bad rundown call right here, thinking you may go for it on fourth down if you run up because you're into that wind right now. Play clock down to one. Shieldhouse, they just get it off. Here comes the blitz. He goes up the seam. Trying to find Spencer Harris. Harris looking for a flag. It'll be fourth down for Illinois. And as you said, decision time here. It's fourth down at the plus 32 yard line, fourth and four. This would be about a 49, maybe a 50 yard field goal if you try it yeah. with a swirling win. And Dimke, Ron Zook told us yesterday, looks like they're going to punt the football, which is surprising. That third down call, I really thought he'd run the quarterback draw there and then go for it on fourth down. Ron Zook deciding to play field position football right here. Ohio State doesn't even have a return man back. Duvernois will pooch it 
And this will land inside the 10 yard line and take a sideways hop out of bounds at about the eight. So the true freshman punter does his job. Only 24 yards, but it's inside the 10 yard line for Ohio State when we return. Hall, or rather Heron, out to about the 15 yard line. Steve Hull made the stop, but Dan Heron picks up six yards. Really have to be impressed with Ohio State. You know, I mentioned again, I mean, I really thought after watching that Nebraska game, they were at the breaking point. I mean, the way they caved in in that fourth quarter in Lincoln, I give them a lot of credit now bouncing in here today. It's not pretty, but it's not going to be pretty right now the way they're set up on offense. Heron again, right up the middle. A first down for Ohio State for Boom Heron. Steve Hall again made the stop, but a gain of eight for Heron. All right, Robert, thanks very much. Another draw play here to Heron. And he's brought down at about the 26 yard line, slipped after a gain of two. That takes us down to 144 to go in the first half. Both teams with all of their timeouts. And Bob Davey, right now for Luke Fickle, is he just trying to run out the first half? Would he take a 3 0 lead to the locker room, or is this at some point going to turn into use your timeouts, spike the ball, run a two minute offense? Yeah, he's trying to do both, to be honest. I mean, he'd love to get down and score, but he'd also, being a defensive guy in nature, and with this young team, he doesn't want to give that ball back to Illinois. But he's getting to the point right now, I think he'll let it loose just a little bit. There goes Heron. He gets loose to the sideline. Boom, Heron's going to get to midfield. Lost the ball, but it bounces out of bounds. Well, now your philosophy might change for Ohio State as they've got the ball at midfield with a lot of time left. Yeah, this has been the number one play. They kind of set pass. It's that lead draw play. And just a great cutback. You know, you get the ball deep to that tailback in the I formation, Bob. And he has a chance to pick and choose what hole he wants to run to. So it's kind of that lead draw pass has been the number one play for Ohio State. And that's a great play against an attacking defense because you kind of set pass, let those defensive linemen run up the field. So the ball back to the 47 yard line the spot where Heron fumbled it out but you could see a moment ago 75 and 78 the left side of that offensive line for Ohio State Mike Adams and Andrew Norwell they are massive as a tackle guard combination and now Miller will throw it takes a shot down the seam incomplete intended for Corey Brown Boy. and Brown had a step he had him Bob and that's the evolution of a young quarterback and he threw that thing on a rope just a line drive throw he had him open, just put some air under it and let Corey Brown run underneath the football. That would have been a big play, maybe a touchdown right there with just a little more finesse out of Braxton Miller. Only the second pass attempt of the first half for Braxton Miller. Stops the clock with 55 seconds to go before halftime. Draw on second and 10. Jordan Hall breaks a tackle. Jordan Hall's got a first down. That will stop the clock for just a moment with 49 seconds to go. And again, Ohio State has all of their timeouts still. Yeah, and right now, Illinois. And they're the, going to call one. The one play that's beating you is that lead draw, letting Illinois run up the field on defense and then running that tailback in behind it. Ohio State looking for more points before halftime. Bob Oshuz and Bob Davey and Heather Cox back here in Champaign. A drive that for the Buckeyes began at their own nine yard line with most likely Ohio State simply trying to put the ball in the freezer and end the first half has them now in plus territory without a completed pass. Miller looking for his first completion of the day. A wobbly throw and it's incomplete way over the head of Jake Stoneburner. That came out like a duck. It'll be third down and ten at the plus forty two for the Buckeyes. You can see why they are simplistic on the offense and haven't thrown many passes. I mean, he's going to throw some wobblers. Young quarterbacks' footwork is very important. We've seen two things. One, he didn't put air under the football on the deep one. That one, he didn't set his feet. Those are two just things in the learning evolution, learning curve of a young quarterback. You can see Illinois is a pretty good comeback team. Will they be behind at halftime today? Here comes a blitz. Miller under pressure. And he goes down. And now Illinois should spend a timeout. Jonathan Brown made the stop. The clock winding down. Illinois has timeouts. Ron Zook needs to call one. 
How do you not call timeout here if you're Illinois? It's third down in a mile, and you might have a chance to get the football back. And Ron Zook at Illinois, they're just going to let the clock wind down. And I'm sure Luke Fickle is more than happy to oblige and take that 3 nothing lead to the locker room at halftime. Interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Particularly with three timeouts. Gives Miller a chance to throw a Hail Mary. And he'll be sacked, and that will end the first half. So Illinois opts to basically allow Ohio State to take a 3-0 lead into the locker room at halftime as they don't put any pressure on the Buckeyes by calling yeah. a timeout I'd be inside curious. of those last 45 seconds. I'd be curious to know what Ron Zook was thinking right there, letting that clock run out at the end of the first half, particularly with a deep receiver like A.J. Jenkins and Nathan Shieldhouse. It's been a very hot passing combination this season. Well, all in all, coming off of the second half meltdown last week for Luke Fickle's team, a pretty impressive first half for Ohio State as we check in with Heather. Coach, what went into your decision not to call a timeout and stop Ohio State? The offense was struggling a little bit there, and, and I, didn't, I didn't think it was a smart move to try to take a chance. So we decided not to, and you know, we got the ball started the second half. Let's go from there. You talk about your offense struggling five drives, five punts. How do you jumpstart them in the second half? Uh, they, you know, that's kind of kind of the way it's been the story of the year. So, I mean, they, they'll come in there. The coaches will do a great job at halftime, and they'll get it. Uh, we'll get them going. Thanks, Coach Zuck. Bob? All right, Heather, thanks very much at halftime. It's a shutout pitch so far by Ohio State. They've got the three nothing lead. The halftime report is next. Just about set for the start of the second half between Illinois and Ohio State. The Buckeyes with a three nothing lead. Bob Wischusen and Bob Davey here in Champaign. Heather Cox with us as well. Coach Davey every week gives us what we call locker room alert. That first thing that a coaching staff talks about when they head into the locker room at halftime. So. For Illinois, what do you think that first thing was when they headed in the locker room at halftime? So, guys, here's the one thing we have to fix for the second half. I mean, yards are like gold. The thing I think they had to fix is the lead draw that Ohio State ran for a lot of success, particularly in the first half. When Ohio State is in eye backs, it's all run. There's no reason for your defensive lineman to run up the field. You see Merciless up the field. So what Ohio State has done, Illinois is an attacking defensive front. They set pass. They invite Illinois to run up the field, and then they run that draw in behind them. But Ohio State hasn't completed a pass in the first half. They're 0 for 3 passing. So if you're Illinois, play, run, particularly if they're in eye backs. What I look for in the second half, I think Illinois is going to open it up a little bit. Illinois is different from Ohio State in the fact that they can throw the ball efficiently. I think Illinois has to come out here and turn Nathan Shieldhouse loose a little bit and get A.J. Jenkins more involved. A couple of times in the first half, Ron Zook was pretty staid in terms of his management of the clock and field position, knowing in the third quarter he would start with the football. And here's Troy Pollard to bring it back. Gets to the edge. Now to about the 30-yard line, and let's go down to Heather. Ohio State with only three passing plays in that first half. I asked Luke Fickle if he was content with the offensive balance. And he said, I have to be today. We can only do what the weather will allow us to do. And with these 40 mile an hour gusts, he doesn't feel confident in the accuracy of his passing game. He said, the one thing we have to do, we can't have negative plays and we have to be more aggressive and create things on defense, guys. Well, they created a shutout in the first half on defense. Not too bad for Ohio State. Let's see. How creative Illinois gets here, a keeper for Shieldhouse, and he's up the middle to about the 35-yard line. That's a gain of six. You know, Bobby, Adam Bellamy brought him down. I almost said Bobby Petrino. Paul Petrino told us yesterday, Bob, we were sitting in there, his goal, Nathan Shieldhouse, 100 yards rushing. And he thought that was realistic because he would call enough quarterback runs. That combined with the scramble, maybe getting Shieldhouse more involved in the running game, get back to your game plan, Second and five, she'll have to throw here. A bullet that's intercepted. Threw it right into the arms of Bradley Roby. Roby's down the sideline. He might score. Brought down at about the 11-yard line. Third interception of the season for Bradley Roby. Boy, you have to wonder, Luke Fickle talking about the wind and how it affected the passing game. 
Heather's interview, maybe it is affecting the passing game. Because you take a look at this all 22, it's just a simple curl route to A.J. Jenkins. And this ball just sails right here on Nathan Shieldhouse. I mean, he's wide open. You see him right there in the seam. Just throws it, and it sailed on him. Only the fourth pick of the season thrown by Shieldhouse. First and ten at the 12. Herring to the five. Easy touchdown for Ohio State. So Boom Heron with his first touchdown of the season. He set out the first six games because of suspension, and he scores here. Yeah, I think what you're going to see, number seven from Illinois, right there goes underneath. They don't put an edge on the ball. And turnover, touchdown. And Illinois started out with possession in the second half, and all of a sudden it's 10-0 Ohio State. Reed Fragel, the tight end for Ohio State, sealed the edge for Boom Heron, and Roby's pick turns into seven. Bob Lashus and Bob Davey, Heather Cox back in Champaign, where the orange and blue fans have been silenced. The combination of Heron scoring a touchdown off the interception by Bradley Roby, and now Nathan Shieldhouse has to bounce back, only his fourth interception thrown this season. He came into today at about 70% completions fifth in the USA and passing efficiency but when you've got a game this low scoring coach it had the feel of a game where one play could change things and we had one play a moment ago that certainly did. Yep. Ohio State continues to squib kick into the wind and Pollard can't get started tripped up at about the 17 yard line. Brought down by Nate Oliver as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. A lot of runs and a turnover resulting in a 10 nothing Ohio State lead to this point. Yeah obviously the biggest play of the game that last series on the Roby interception then the Heron touchdown. We take a couple of those touchdowns in our game here as Shieldhouse bobbles the snap and he'll go down inside the five. John Simon throws down Nathan Shieldhouse they'll give him progress to the four yard line. But Shieldhouse bobbled the snap and things went from bad to worse for yeah. Illinois. Yeah, because he bobbled the snap, he ended up leaving the pocket. And you're just going to see Simon. I mean, the offensive tackle had no angle in which to block Simon because Shieldhouse had to leave the pocket with that bad snap. Loss of eight yards. Pollard into a wall of silver white and red Jonathan Hankins brought him down after a gain of maybe a couple of yards it's going to be third down and long now Jason Ford has returned to the sideline but as we heard from Heather Cox earlier he has a shoulder injury and is doubtful to return so now Donovan Young the true freshman goes in replacing Troy Pollard Might be the final play of the third quarter. Third down and 15 from deep in their own end for the Illini. Shieldhouse for the end zone. Steps up. Slings it to the sideline. Jenkins makes the catch right at the first down marker. Is that a pressure third down conversion for the Illini? Anytime you have a running quarterback and that quarterback steps up in a position to break the line of scrimmage, that puts a tremendous bind on that secondary. That time Nathan Shilas looked like he was going to take off and run and throws off the run for the biggest first down of this game as that, far as Illinois is concerned. That takes us to the end of the third quarter but a big boost for an Illinois offense that needs it. After an interception was thrown by Nation Shieldhouse to Bradley Roby. It resulted in the Dan Heron touchdown that gives Ohio State the 10 nothing lead heading to the fourth. The Illibuck Trophy, the Wooden Turtle, that's what they're playing for, and the Ohio State fans have it. They don't want to give it up, and they might not have to if their defense continues to play the way they have this afternoon as we start the fourth quarter, coming off of a big third down and long conversion for Illinois to end the third, but they're still a long way from getting points on the board. 
Shieldhouse traps one and goes up the middle. C.J. Barnett brings him down after a gain of about six. The headline in this game, the Ohio State Buckeyes have a 10-0 lead, and they haven't completed a pass in the game. Zero yeah. completions, yeah. and they've got a two-score lead. Yeah, and really, their defense has allowed them to do that. I mean, they haven't had to throw the ball. They have a field goal, they have an interception, and then the Dan Heron touchdown. Their defense is obviously the story in this game. A.J. Jenkins lost the football. It's loose. He had it at the 35, turned up field, a flag down. That was thrown well after the play was over. It is an Ohio State recovery. It looks like Storm Klein came up with the fumble. We'll have to check the penalty, but the penalty really should only influence field position. It should not influence possession at all as the flag was thrown well after the play was over. Yeah, clearly a fumble. Ruling on the field is a fumble. That was recovered by Ohio State after the play is over. Dead ball, personal foul, offensive team, number 73, 15-yard penalty, first down. Wow, that's going to put the ball down inside the Illinois 25-yard line. You're going to see Moeller coming right there, strips that thing out. Storm Klein on the recovery. Great effort play by Moeller. Jenkins holding that ball a little bit loose. Boy, two major turnovers in this second half for the Illinois offense. Illinois' defense has to hold to a field goal here. Heron up the middle. Ooh, he got tripped up. It looked like he had a lane. Good job by Jonathan Brown to trip up Boom Heron. A gain of only about four yards as we take a look again at our Pacific Life game summary. In the red zone goes Ohio State. They have run 42 plays. They have no pass completions, and yet they're on the verge of potentially taking a three-score lead. Yeah, and the two turnovers by Illinois in a low-scoring game like this. Obvious how significant those two turnovers are. Aaron bounces it outside. A flag down as he is brought down about five yards shy of the first down. Tavon Wilson came up and made the stop. We'll have to check the penalty. There's no foul on the play for a block in the back. So the flag gets picked up. It'll be third down and about four for Ohio State. And this is a huge play for the defense of Illinois. Yeah, and if you're Illinois on defense, I play right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you have to anticipate right here some kind of draw or quarterback type run. I would make Ohio State throw the ball. Do not run upfield. The crowd seems to realize that this might be the game for the Fighting Illini. Third down and five inside the 20. Play action for Braxton Miller. Fires into the end zone. He's got a touchdown. Jake Stoneburner on the first pass completion of the day for Ohio State. And it's a touchdown from 17 yards out. Ohio State's best receiver is their tight end Stoneburner. Had a 32-yard touchdown last week and two touchdowns in this second half off of two Illinois turnovers. Ohio State with one pass completion for the game. And they've got a three-score lead with 13.06 to go. That is hard to believe. Well, you're going to see Stonebrenner right here at tight end. Working on the safety. Great little outside move. Breaks it back to the inside. Accurate throw by the quarterback. A look at Memorial Stadium through the years. And we might not have a a better looking day inside the stadium than what we have today but in spite of the fact that the fighting Illini fans have striped the stadium they have not had much to cheer about as their undefeated Illini have now fallen behind by 17 points with 1306 to go the first pass completion of the day by Braxton Miller was good for a touchdown and the fumble by AJ Jenkins costs Illinois seven Stoneburner with his sixth touchdown catch of the year 
And Shieldhouse goes nowhere. Lost a yard and a half, and again it's John Simon making the stop. First and 16 back near midfield. Shieldhouse, wobbly pass down the rail, diving attempt by Lankford, incomplete, and the crowd of the far sideline looking for another flag. I think the thing we've seen today, the physical nature of these Ohio State corners. Again, there's Travis Howard up there in bump and run, playing really physical on Lankford. I don't think they feel there's great speed at Illinois. There was a little bit of a push right there. But I've been impressed with Ohio State's physical nature, getting up there, challenging these receivers of Illinois. Second down and 16 and what has to be four down territory for Illinois under 10 minutes to go. Shieldhouse sets up the screen. Donovan Young going nowhere. Gained maybe a yard. Great job by Christian Bryant to come up from his free safety spot to make the stop. Now it's third down and long. Yeah, you said it, Bob. Christian Bryant had a blocker on him. He just beats the blocker. He had the big offensive guard, you Thornton, out there in his face. Just sidestepped and made a heck of a play in the open field. Illinois doesn't have to get all 15 yards on this play. You have to think this is four down territory, down by three scores. Top of your screen is A.J. Jenkins. Shieldhouse instead looks over the middle. Now he's under pressure. Trying to extend the play. Flips it, and he's got a completion. Ooh. That's good for a first down to John Davis. What a job by Nathan Shieldhouse to keep the play alive. Anytime you only rush three guys, the quarterback, especially an active quarterback like Shieldhouse, is going to stay alive. And John Davis took a heck of a lick after that catch. But you talk about another key third down conversion for Illinois. Ohio State had a meltdown up three scores in the second half last week against Nebraska. Shieldhouse with a bullet. Knocked away. Bradley Roby against A.J. Jenkins. And that time Roby was able to get his left hand around and bat the pass away. And what you just said, the meltdown last week against Nebraska, when you have a young defense, you're talented, but you're young. Last week when Braxton Miller went out, Ohio State's defense let that affect them. Now all of a sudden you're up comfortably 17 to nothing. You don't want to drop your performance now, but with a young defense, that's what you worry about a little bit. Not playing just consistent throughout the whole day. Ohio State showing a corner blitz. You can see Roby coming off of Jenkins, showing rush. Shieldhouse pumps once, and he'll run. Spins down to about the 16-yard line. That's a first down. Barnett and Roby combine on the stop. I tell you, in this era of zone blitzes, attacking defenses, you have to have a running quarterback. That day of that big 6-5 drop back quarterback, that day is over. After the timeout, Shieldhouse, again running room with a pump fake. He's down to about the 10-yard line. Brought down at the 11, four yards shy of a first down. And Ron Zook knows his team has to keep the tempo up if they're going to have a chance to get back in this game. The secondary of Ohio State continues to play extremely well. I mean, there's just no place for Shieldhouse to go with the ball. Some confusion for Illinois as they had 12 men on the field. 13th play of the drive. And the crowd getting Shield antsy. I think, the, I think he sees blitz coming here. Ohio State backs out there. They'll give it to Pollard. Pollard can't get free. He's got a first down, though. It looks like at about the seven-yard line, right at the first down marker. It depends on where they spot the football. Etienne Sabino made the stop. And maybe he's a hair shy of the first down, third down and one. Good tackle in there at fullback for Illinois. You know he's going to take you where the football goes. That's about a 300-pound fullback in there. They give to Donovan Young. He's got the first down. But again, Illinois has to keep the tempo up, as this will take us under seven minutes to go. It is first and goal. Again, the Illini go with six offensive linemen. A big Thornton in there. 315-pound offensive guard at fullback. And off to Young on the 15th play of the drive. 
And he is shut down. It'll be second down and goal from about the three. Storm Klein made the stop. This drive is taking such an enormous amount of time off the clock for Illinois. Even if they score, it almost accomplishes the goal for Ohio State. Yeah, this really does become a passing down right here. You try to run it on first down. Now it's second and goal at the three. This is some kind of boot or play action down, I would think. Shieldhouse off a of play action fake into the end zone. He's got a touchdown. Evan Wilson. And finally, Illinois is on the board. Yeah, a little bootleg to the right. He's going to hit the tight end coming from the left on the crossing route. Right there. Good job, Evan Wilson, holding on to the ball. Time-consuming, long drive for Illinois, but they're still in. Dimke adds the point after, and it's now a two-possession game with 6.22 to go. Anytime you have a running quarterback, play-action pass becomes a factor. Big score for Illinois. They are still fighting for the Illibuck Trophy. The winner takes on the turtle between Ohio State and Illinois. Illinois finally gets on the board. And Luke Fickle for the first time this afternoon. A little bit of a test for his defense as a three-possession game becomes a two-possession game. But clearly no onside kick here by Illinois. Too much time remaining. Three timeouts. Put the pressure on Braxton Miller, freshman In quarterback. First and 15. They'll give it to Hyde. No gain on first down. No reason for Illinois to start spending their timeouts as of yet. Six minutes and ten seconds to go. First carry of the day for Carlos Hyde. Yeah, Carlos Hyde had a big run last week against Nebraska. All of a sudden becomes the third running back behind Heron and Hall. But He's the kind of guy you like in these four-minute, five-minute kind of situations, that big, powerful back. Second down and 15. Probably get that lead draw play right here to the tailback if you're Illinois. Just sit there on the line of scrimmage. No gain on second down. It'll be third down and long. And Heron dropped by Tavon Wilson. And now Braxton Miller has to make sure he's careful with the football. I think if you read a lot of the accounts from the Nebraska game last week, you would have thought that it was 27 to 6 when Braxton Miller went out with his injury. He actually had not a fumble, but Nebraska simply stripped the ball away from the freshman quarterback. That set up the first touchdown. Yeah. For Nebraska in that comeback, so this is an important down for the and quarterback say this, to take care of the ball. If I'm Illinois and I stop them here on a running play and that clock goes, I would call timeout. I wouldn't let them squander another 40 seconds. Get the stop, call timeout. Miller, will he throw it? He'll run instead, and the draw play works. About two yards shy of a first down. Call he is brought down by Terry Hawthorne. If I'm Illinois, call timeout right now. Don't let him run that thing down 40 more seconds. You can save time a lot easier on offense than you can defense. I would not let them milk this clock right here. Well, at this point, you have to think the ship has sailed. Now that you've let yeah, 20 seconds go off the clock, it would defeat the purpose. So Ben Buchanan averaging about 42 yards per kick. I try and send it down to Lankford. And this is a pretty short kick. Lankford, fair catch called for and made near midfield. So great field position in a two-possession game. Well, Ohio State's done a great job of not giving up big plays. A.J. Jenkins, number one in the country coming into this game with four plays over 50 yards. Ohio State's secondary has done a great job of keeping them from those situations down the field. Illinois with the short field. Shieldhouse well protected. Downfield looking for Langford and it's intercepted. Picked off by Travis Howard. Howard on the return. Back out to the 35 yard line. One play after getting it near midfield. Shieldhouse picked off for the second time today. Underthrown. 
I don't know how much the wind was a factor right there, but Travis Howard up there like he's playing bump and run. Watch him. He's going to line him up here tight, but then he's going to back out, and all it is is a go route. The ball is underthrown. Langford has inside position. He's in good situation right there. Ball underthrown. Good recovery by Travis Howard. Does Three turnovers in the second half on passing plays for Illinois. Does the receiver bear any responsibility for trying to fight back underneath yeah. to get that football help by the quarterback? Good point. I think you make a good point. And he gave up on that a little bit. At least you become a defensive player and try to keep it from being intercepted. Carlos Hyde picks up six yards on first down as Shieldhouse is on the phone upstairs, but now the decision for Illinois, when do you use your timeouts? Three and a half minutes to go. You need two scores. And Ron Zook not calling a timeout on the first play on this series. Yeah, I always use those timeouts right away in this situation. Because in case they do turn it over or make a mistake, you have more time if you get the ball on offense. I don't like saving them. There's no reason to let the clock run down and use them late. Lose them as, use them as early as you can in this situation. And off to high. And he is stacked up about two yards shy of the first down. And now Ron Zook will call his first time out. A flag thrown as well. Yeah. Big offensive tackle. Mike Adams about 20 yards down the field. After the play is over, unnecessary roughness. Offense, number 75, 15-yard penalty. We will repeat, or I'm sorry, it will be third down. Because it was after the play, yeah. You lose the down. You also lose the yardage. And if the flag was thrown before Ron Zick called timeout, Illinois is not going to lose a timeout as well. They'll hold on to their three timeouts. It'll also stop the clock. That's a big help to Ohio State, or rather to Illinois. As with 2.53 to go, they are able to hold on to one of their timeouts. Yeah, he was 20 yards down the field after that play. Now the clock winds, though. Yeah, and I'd use the timeout right now from Illinois. Don't let it again run down 40 seconds. The only thing that helps the Illini is because it was a penalty, it's a 25-second play clock instead of 40 seconds. But they will take the game clock inside of two and a half minutes before the snap. Miller, quarterback draw. Merciless, read it. Brings him down back at the 22, and now Ron Zook will call timeout. To go. And how about we give some credit, and I think deservedly so, to Luke Fickle. The hand he was dealt at the start of this season, five of his best players, not only suspended, but maybe the best player of them all, the star quarterback jumps to the NFL. You've got other suspensions that come down the pike that cost him the best running back maybe in the conference for the first six games, and Dan Boom Heron. And he has this Ohio State team, even after a meltdown last week against Nebraska, in position to win on the road here at Illinois. Bobbly kick, Langford with a fair catch at his own 43. Only a 33-yard punt as we take a look at some of the key plays here in the second half. Yeah, it's been turnovers. You know, the interception right here set up the touchdown to Heron. Then the fumble by Jenkins. Moeller causes the fumble, Klein in her Klein recovers, sets up the touchdown pass to Stoneburner. And then the last interception on first and 10, Illinois had some momentum. So the three turnovers in the second half, the key plays to this game. Shieldhouse to the sideline. The catch made inbounds by Langford, short of the first down. It's a gain of about eight, but that will roll the clock, and that'll take us inside of two minutes to go. How big was that penalty on Mike Adams? Not only did it get the ball back, it changed field position. Ohio State was at midfield before that penalty. Shieldhouse looks the other way. This time he's got Jenkins, and Jenkins will get out of bounds at the 40. Stop the clock with 149 left. Illinois still with two timeouts, but they need two scores. That's not the time to be waving to that camera. <laughs> Coming off that big penalty.
The Ohio State, the most success you've had is being physical with those wide receivers at Illinois. Don't back off too much right now. Shieldhouse finds some time again to the sideline. Spencer Harris makes the catch, a gain of about five on first down. It stops the clock. You had Illinois last year. Shieldhouse's development as a passer has been outstanding. I mean, he has come so far as a quarterback in the pocket compared to a year ago. I had them last year against Michigan, though. <laughs> what was that, 65, 62? I'm just saying, there are a lot of quarterbacks who look good in that game. Travis Howard, by the way, cornerback for Ohio State, has yet to return, shaken up after his interception. Over the middle, that's a first down catch made by John Davis. That'll stop the clock inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, this, this Ohio State defense, because of those turnovers they forced, they've been on the field an awful lot, particularly here in the fourth quarter. You can see right here, they're a little bit tired, a little bit late getting lined up right there. Schillhouse looks in zone. Just about had a connection with Harris. Yeah. Couldn't have been thrown much better. That was a tremendous throw down the scene. Let's take a look at it right here. Oh, just off the fingertips. But this is a tired Ohio State defense right here. They've just played so much in the fourth quarter of this game. I mean, they're hanging on a little bit right now. Inside the 20 yard line, Troy Pollard steps out of bounds. About two yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and two at the 17. Illinois obviously wants a touchdown. Worst case scenario, they could get a field goal, still set up the onside kick. They need a touchdown and a field goal. You can't play this as if you need one score and on third and exactly. three, run the ball. Yeah. It's a you need throw to preserve your every timeouts. down. No game, question. Yeah. A lot of too deep coverage right now by Ohio State. Shieldhouse pumps once under some pressure. Flips one into traffic. And it's knocked away. John Davis took a shot. It'll be fourth down, and now you have to kick the field goal. Here's the decision. That's it. I, I don't know what the decision yeah. would be here. you got to kick yeah. the field yeah. goal because you need two scores. You kick the field goal. Onside kick. You've got two timeouts. And yeah. give yourself a chance to score the yeah, touchdown. You have to kick the field goal. Give yourself a chance for the onside kick. If you go for it and don't make it, the game's over. I think the crowd realizes it, too. I think they're booing the decision yeah. to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, this is a mistake right here. Shieldhouse on fourth and two. Throws one out to the left, and it's incomplete behind Jenkins. I have absolutely no understanding of what's going through the decision there to go for it on fourth yeah, down. Because now the game's over. You give yourself absolutely no chance. Because you needed a touchdown on a field goal any way you cut it. Get the field goal. You've got a great kicker. He's made, what, eight in a row now? But back to Ohio State and Luke Fickle. Tremendous job. Tremendous job. Because I mentioned every experience he has is a new experience. Coming off that meltdown last week, he had a lot of decisions to make this week. Does he beat the team up? Does he, does he practice over physical, over hard? I think he made a good decision that this football team was a little bit tired mentally and physically. Aaron goes up the middle, and Illinois spends one of their two remaining timeouts with 1.07 to go. But short of Ohio State fumbling the ball here inside their own 20-yard line, they're going to win this game. So if we project forward, and Ohio State does indeed get their first conference win, this muddies things certainly in the leaders' division as Illinois drops from the ranks of the unbeaten. And there's Penn State at 6-1 and one overall. With a half game lead over Wisconsin. Wisconsin, as you would expect, drubbed Indiana earlier today. And I think Wisconsin, if there's one team I had to pick outside of those four teams we talked about, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State going to play each other. Alabama and LSU, they're going to play each other. 
I think Wisconsin is the team that's laying in the weeds that could very easily go undefeated and based on those teams beating each other up could find their way into the BCS title game. Yeah that's fair with the addition of Russell Wilson but for Ohio State the open date coming up then Wisconsin this is a major win to be able to build on over the open date because they were backed in a corner. Ohio State can run the ball and as long as Jordan Hall holds onto it and he's close to a first down. He's out across the 28 to about the 29 yard line. Illinois can't get the stop and that means that Ohio State will be able to kneel on it and they will leave Champaign with a 17 to 7 win and looking ahead for the Buckeyes. This is a tough road when you are at Nebraska at Illinois back to back weeks and number four Wisconsin comes to the horseshoe on October 29th just the positive momentum you have even though you're a four and three team and that's not acceptable Ohio State to go into that open day because this was a gut check today you know I said in the open I thought they'd play their best game of the year I think they have played their best game of the year they were backed in a corner but they fought their way out a lot of credit to this team and that guy helped having Heron back definitely gave them a spark. And Ron Zook's going to face some questions. Well the X's and O's question certainly with about a minute and 20 seconds to go down two scores with two timeouts left. Why would you not kick the field goal on fourth down and two. They go for it instead fail to convert turn it over on downs and Ohio State able to run out the clock. So on a day where Luke Fickle is able to manage his team through a game where they had one pass completion and they still end up winning and Heather Cox is with the winning head coach. Bob thank you coach Fickle congratulations after the disappointment of last week how did you get your team to rally and respond today. They got a lot of heart that's the most important thing about it. Um, you know all the guys they know what it's about they know what it's about to be a Buckeye and uh, they showed their pride. And your defense was huge in the second half two interceptions a fumble recovery. What did you learn about your young defense today. Again it's, it's about working to get better and uh, you know the first few games we just probably didn't make as many plays as we could have and today it showed up that we made some plays and that's the difference in the ballgame. And how did Dan Heron's return really change the chemistry out there on the field. Well, Dan's a big part of, a, of, of who we are and it's more so even in the locker room than on the field but it sure helps to have him on the field as well. Go enjoy the win. Thank thanks you. coach. All right Heather thanks very much. Congratulations to Luke Fickle he gets Dan Boom Heron back and Ohio State wins it on the road 17 7 is our final as Illinois loses their first game of the season terrific effort on the road by the Buckeyes they win it by 10 and get their first Big Ten win of the season now let's go back to the studio.